Hello, today I am going to bring you on your first steps with QCAM Presenter. Then I'm going to share the tour for you at the end, that's going to be a beach sheet script and I'm also going to show you something extra special. This is still a Squares TV app lab, this is number 44. Um, I feel like the volume is a bit high on that. Um, so QCAM Presenter brings together the best of shoot, video, pencil and beat sheet, but that's sort of the umbrella, this is sort of like the cent central thing that we're focused on now because it connects with everything else. Um, for today's session there's a private Zoom, so you may hear some questions coming from a mysterious place, and there's also a YouTube stream uh, feed, so I'll, I may be putting up comments from YouTube as well. Uh, so if you do have any questions, you can put your hand up or you can sort of post a question in chat and I will try not to get distracted or buy it or miss it. <laughs> so uh, let's go. So I've got some updates for you first. Um, something on Beat Sheet, something on Video Pencil, on the QCAM website and the QCAM YouTube. So the first thing I just wanted, I, I just had a little email exchange the other day. Um, I just wanted to clarify that BeatSheet is still supported. So like, it's not like your, that your purchase is, even though you do get the discount if you do get QCAM, BeatSheet is still supported um, since the launch of QCAM. And it's going to, eventually it's going to get a lot of those improvements that I made to the card editing in, interface um, and some usability improvements. But at the moment, it's like I did a lot of work on the shared code base and it's currently not building. So I, I, it's going to be a little while before I can um, I can do another build of that, another release of that. But it's 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 not like it's not gone, <laughs> just in case anyone was worried about that. Um, uh, the next thing is um, video pencil update. <laughs> just uh, I had my first free swim in ages last week. So something I do for myself every Friday usually is um, just let myself. You know, usually I have a little idea that I want to try that I don't really know why but it just sort of seems like a fun thing to do. And usually that's a little programming thing, but I haven't been doing them because it's just been such a crunch to get QCAM Presenter out. But um, last week I, I let myself do one. And uh, so I came up with this uh, sparkle pencil. So uh, I've just been meaning to do this for ages. And it, I, actually I was, I was on this call yesterday and I just sort of like threw it in when I was introducing myself and sort of the next, someone else like commented on, I think, I think he was the winner of the, uh, of the intros. Um, so test flight users, you'll have this already on video pencil. I'll hopefully ship later this week. I just there's because there's some other stuff in um, in video pencil that has been noticed. It does now support USB cameras, the test flight build, um, and the only issue is I just need to make sure that it. Um, supports hot swapping elegantly because now if you sort of plugged in a USB camera without like restarting it it wouldn't it wouldn't show up immediately because you know I assume that you, you, you sort of assume that the camera is not going to change when it's a hardware camera but now that it can be you know plugged in and unplugged you need to sort of handle that and I, and I haven't got round to that quite yet but as soon as I've done that then, then I can ship the new build of video pencil. Um, and the actual hard bit of the <laughs> the sparkles was this is like this this is what the little tool looks like, and so I made this. I wanted to have a little kind of sparkly pen, so uh, I was I was spent way too long modelling this in Blender and doing a hair simulation and trying to figure out when you select it that it does this little anim animation. But yeah, this little guy um is uh, that's what your sparkle pen looks like inside the user interface. Hey, look, John's got it. I can see on the on the Zoom, John's trying it out. Uh, but yeah, this, this was this this I spent far too long on. Um, but you know, it's just like all the tools that all the pens in uh, video yeah, pens are all I modeled them all in three D in Blender. But this is the first time I've sort of added a little animation to one as well. Um, but you know, like I say, free swim, having a bit of fun with stuff. So it's just nice to be able to. Yes, there's lots to do on QCAM. There's lots of materials to create. There's some bugs here and there as well. I did push out a, a minor release today just to fix the card, like the card editing real-time previews weren't working pro properly. And then I was doing a lot of card editing today, so I, I fixed that up. But yeah, that that's a bit of fun, giving myself a little bit more time to do that kind of thing, which means we'll get some more fun stuff again and hopefully some more content as well. Um, I have been tweaking QCAMpresenter.com um, and today I did put a little installation tour. So when you click download now, it sort of gives you the little 
sort of how to install and sort of takes you through all the gotchas of uh, of the installation steps. I have had one complaint that there is no audio on that, which I just I don't have time to do a voiceover for it. I just I just wanted to have it here as a sort of muted looped video. Uh, but yeah, now so when you download from the website for the first time, you'll get a bit of a heads up that there's a few things to click on um, before it works. Um, I um, yeah, what else? So oops. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I really like, I should use the, for some reason I really like using the keyboard shortcuts for QCam rather than the Stream Deck for some reason, because I think it's like quieter or something. But um, anyway, the other thing is uh, the QCam YouTube, which you can get to, uh, basically if you sort of click help anywhere, um, you'll, you can go over to the QCam YouTube. And uh, so I've started uploading these shorts I did with Rob Rusher. And of course, we've got we've got John During's uh, ever growing playlist of little tips and tricks. So if you want to come to the QCam, um, he's giving me a thumbs up on Zoom. Um, if you want to come over to the uh, to the YouTube and please do give that a subscribe. We're up to 18. That's pretty good in a week. Um, um, uh, you just go and have a look and see how John's using it because he's he's done all these nice little videos, <laughs> which uh, which uh, just sort of he's been sort of coming up with lots of different creative ways to to showcase what it can do that are beyond what I've, I've been really thinking about. I've just been trying to get it sort of feature complete, and whereas uh, John's been sort of like playing with it and trying out different ideas, doing lots of weird AI AI stuff as well with it. Um, so <laughs> yes, um. So this is the main event today. So what I, I said last week that I would put up a sample document for QCAM and it's taken me till, and I, I just wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with that. But today I sort of dug in and and um, sorted out the QCAM talk. Now's about the time when I'm going to, let me know anyone um, if my audio or video starts going choppy, but now seems to be about the time it usually happens. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out. I think it's doing pretty well. But anyway, QCAM talk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the document that I prepared and I'm just basically going to sort of take you through that. Um, so <clears throat> let's get started. And then if I can sort of bring that up, I can show you what this looks like. So this is this is a document, I'll make it available for downloading, but it sort of just takes you through the, the main features. I feel like I'm peaking a bit. Uh, I keep seeing orange on my QCAM. I'm just gonna like pull this down a little bit. Um, so it sort of starts off by saying, okay, click the camera button above so that you can see your camera preview, but we'll, um, we'll keep that hidden for now because it does add a bit of noise to the stream. Um, so yeah, just press the big pink button and we can go. Um, so now, the first thing is you can jump to any card by using this little button on the left edge. So that's something to know. And then your speaker notes will appear in the main camera view. So here's the, here's the speaker notes right here. Am I going to do everything with the sparker camera? Should, should we go to the slightly sober, more sober laser pointer? Um, so we can um, you, you can hide and show that with this little button down here. There's a little button here. And you can also bring up a transparent window by clicking here. Oh, I just toggled it and <laughs> brought it back. So I've got mine in my teleprompter. But so you can um, you can drag that transparent window anywhere uh, with the uh, once you've uh, shown that. Um, so you can include the camera view in your desktop HUD. So so I, I, I like to do this. This is actually how I use it most of the time now. Um, the desktop HUD can actually have your camera preview in it as well. So you can just use this um, this menu item include camera in desktop hub and that will sort of give you a window with your camera preview and that, that's quite good to put in your teleprompter but you don't need a teleprompter uh, this is what it looks like so the desktop hub has um it has it does have the card navigation it's got your volume you can see your your volume level you can't you know i can see mine sort of well if we look here um you can see the volume level and then it's also you know, it, it just sort of like gives you a little heads up. And if you get too loud, it will flash orange as well. So you, and so you can sort of like be looking into the camera, but you'll sort of get a heads up if, if anything's gone wrong with your audio. Um, so the audio levels just gets called out here. When your mic is at a good volume, the audio meter should be green. And you can click on the audio meter to get this 
So you want your level to be around minus 23 luffs, which is basically going to be green. Um, you can change the volume here and that will change the hardware input level. So it won't just like attenuate what's coming in that's been mixed through your sound preferences on the system. It will like control the system sound input. I did fix a bug where if that if it can't be controlled, it can still you can um, you can change the volume as of today. And then there is a delay calculator. If your if your audio doesn't seem to be in sync, you can sort of click a button. It will ask you to clap, and then it will give you the delay. So that that's just built into that panel. Um, and then the the next thing is these control pads. So where, what does that look like in context? You've got these um, over here. You've got these four buttons. So that's I'll take you through what they are. So the first one is your your main camera, which you really only. I really only intend for you to select once. Like you shouldn't really, you don't really need to be switching your main camera all the time. Um, you should just sort of like, you know, you've got your main camera, just leave it at that. You can actually with the sidebar, like you can actually like switch cameras, switch your main camera with like um, a URL command, but I just don't see that as something that needs to be done all the time. But you just click on the right, on the drop down on the right to select it. But you can also um, click on the button to hide well actually at the moment it freezes <laughs> um the um the main camera feed um and then if you're in picture in picture it will, it will toggle it so this is sort of like a button to button to sort of toggle that main camera or select it and then next you've got this is this is sort of this is the big this is so sort of when you're just on a call and you just want to share something you're gonna either you can hit the button the main button to just share your default desktop and you can change which your normal desktop is uh, from the present shared desktop menu. So if you just tell it like what's the desktop that you usually want to share and um, then just hitting that, that one click is just going to sort of immediately share it. So I'm just clicking it now. Well, I'll show you if I do this, I can just share, share. But you can also click this little drop down here and you can share sort of like anything basically. Um, so this is this is the quickest way to just share something. So you can go um, displays, so you can pick a different screen to share. Device, this is sort of if you want to share an iPad screen. Um, this is something, like, yeah, I need to tidy up a bit. Windows, um, you can select a specific window. That's good if you want the audio from the window. Um, cameras, you can select any camera selected as a second camera. So if, and then if you um, if you have shoot running on a nearby camera, um, on a nearby iPhone, you can just select that. Um, and that will come in. Shall I, shall I, uh, shall I show you that? So uh, if we uh, just select cameras, we can select shoot on Michael Forrest, so iPhone 13 Pro, and now you can see where I am. <laughs> I can just share that immediately, and um, I can uh, um, use that as a second camera, and I can be picture in picture down here. So uh, click it again. That sort of brings it back to the main camera. <clears throat> Um, the other options, of course, are you know you can you can just immediately share an image or immediately share a video as well. So if you just wanted to sort of throw something up, you can do it through that menu. Um, when I, when you are sharing anything, the main camera button switches to a picture in picture. So if we were on the desktop, and I click that main button, I can I can toggle on. So I'm just um, clicking here. Uh, this uh, the main camera. I can switch it on and off picture in picture just there um, and and when you are so then the next one is if you're sharing a slide so this is a third button down on the right so if I so you see I've got a slide now uh, with just this, an image and a button if I just uh, if, I, if I sort of click on this slide button that's just going to hide that and if I click it again it will bring it back so this is whatever card we're looking at here will will control what happens there um, and if you're not sharing a slide, this is really handy. Um, you've got this uh, text. It just turns into a text thing. So I can say, oh yeah, squares.tv. Um, or like, I, I use this for, um, you know, it's like PSAX uh, grep something. Like if, if you're talking to someone, it's a bit hard to, um, hard to uh, like say it in words. Like it's a really quick way of just being able to chuck the text up on the screen. So you can just put that in. And then if you are um, on a slide, then it's uh, it becomes a drop down. So here's my slide, but I can sort of add text using the little drop down arrow. And then finally, 
we've got the Aside 3D, um, which is, so if you're sharing anything, you can immediately press that Aside button and just move that out the way. That's now down here. Um, and you can sort of talk to the camera and then just like bring it back up. So it means, so if you can just, just picture you're sharing your screen on a normal Zoom call and you just want to talk to the camera and not be sharing your screen for a moment, it's like quite a lot of rigmarole, isn't it? Um, so you just sort of tend to talk away whilst the screen share is there and you're in your little box. But this way you can just sort of like, okay, just I'm, I'm showing you something, I'm picture in picture or not, and, or I can just come up and fill the screen. So that's just like something I, I use all the time. Also, it's quite cool if you're sharing your screen, um, you can uh, like show like what you're scrolling through without it sort of like people, someone can see that you're looking at what they just sent you and see that you're reading it. And there's things like that. There's quite a lot of things that you can do with it. Um, now, if you have an iPad, um, you can install Video Pencil and then you can just draw on any of this stuff or use a laser pointer. Um, so all you have to do is um, find Video Pencil in the App Store, install it on your iPad, pick up your iPad and run it and it will immediately you'll see um, if we just aside 3D this immediately on the iPad screen it will show what's coming from QCam and you can just draw on that as accurately as you like so we can say okay this is just an amazing amazing um, an amazing automatic connection uh, so that's like a really quick way to be able to draw on your screen and um, <clears throat> you don't have to do anything. But if you do sort of want to have a look, that there are a lot of these um, controls. So if we, if I come into demo mode, so you see this sidebar up here. Oops, oops. Uh, there's um, there's the sidebar button here. So if I click that, uh, while video pencil's connected, we're going to see. Oh, I think my window is at its minimum width. <laughs> so you can see video pencil. Um, all the controls are down here so if I drew a picture I could click here to clear the drawing or press X on my desktop or I can press the number keys um, to sort of quickly uh, select between different pens uh, there's, sorry there's a, a, a testing feature that is doing something weird here but um, you can select the different um, uh, pens just with your keyboard so if you wanted to just quickly do that and then press X to clear like you, you can you can sort of like get pretty good at doing that kind of thing um, so that's available um, and a pro tip it's not mentioned in the document if you right click on any of these you can copy a deep link and sort of assign that to your stream deck but they, these will also these will all come through to your stream deck and also like it will be the right pens with the right colors and they will come through onto the stream deck buttons so if you have you know you, you can configure all your your different row of pens in video pencil um, and um, uh, you, the colors will come through onto the Stream Deck buttons or they'll come through up here as well. Like you'll be able to see the right colors there. It will be the right selections. So um, that's, that's, that's that. And then um, you can also add text from your iPad with live titles. So if I just draw an underline and say something, hello, um, then that, I can just draw the line. Hello. It's actually sort of probably more useful um, for small text, right? Because if, if I just wanted to say hello, I could just write that. But if I'd sort of drawn a Venn diagram, you know, good, wait, uh, good, bad, um, free, you know, I don't know. Like you could you can very quickly sort of, sort of draw something on the iPad using live titles and that will just work and it will come through to, to QCAM. Um, so what what are QCAM presentations? So they're basically made up of these smart Q cards. So you're you're essentially you're writing your speaker notes. So so these look like um, this. This each of these is a Q card. Um, each of these cards here. So um, you can write your notes out card by card. Um, you can add new cards just by clicking in the space above or below. So just sort of click there. If you click on the card, you can press delete to, to, to remove it. Um, uh, you can sort of multi-select, you can drag them around. Um, and then if you're in if you're in a card, you can also use command enter. So, so it, is, it is very keyboard friendly. So you, you don't have to, and like the tab key works properly and, and that's all nice. But basically what you're putting in those cards is your speaker notes and that's what's gonna come up on your teleprompter or on the shoot screen. Um, so that the sort of focus of your talk is 
you, right, and what you're saying rather than some deck template, right? So that's why that sort of teleprompter speaker notes is prioritized above like some like fancy slide deck. So I'm sort of like inverting that thing where it's, you know, Keynote does have the sort of little speaker notes thing, but you, you don't really use it because it's a bit out of the way and it's a bit hard to see. And you don't know if you're going to have this, this, the, um, the environment to use it really. Um, so everything you put on a card will show up in your speaker notes and that'll be sent to shoot or your teleprompter. So if you have an iPhone or iPad running, shoot which you can get from squares.tv slash shoot and um, you can use it as your main camera and then or you don't have to use it as your main but like if, if if you don't have another camera and a teleprompter you can use shoot as your main camera um uh if you launch it while qcam is running um i'll see if i can show you this um it's immediately it's going to get the um the camera feed from our stream so you see that's that's the, the, you see the slide is on on the shoot screen maybe you can't see that but like so the camera preview is on there and also my speaker notes are appearing on there and they're placed near the device's camera so that you look natural when you're reading so um that's that's something i played about with so if you, if you don't have like a big teleprompter you can you can actually get a pretty close experience um just using shoot and it's really handy to have um um have the, the preview on the phone screen so you can sort of see what you look like what your stream looks like with the slides in in context and um, and then there's a get then something else you can do is actually sort of pick your zoom call to send to the phone so you can actually see the other person's face while you're talking to them so that's that's another option as well and um when you are using shoot as your main camera you can pop out qcam sidebar and you've got these um these uh, camera controls so you can zoom in focus set the you know white balance and stuff um on that on that iphone or ipad camera if you already have a teleprompter set up with a secondary display that's you know you can you can i have an ipad in uh i have my uh i wonder why the picture oh, yeah so i've got my ipad in this uh teleprompter rig so my camera is back here so i can look directly through the um through the glass to to the camera lens and so whatever's on here so the ipad is as an external display so i can drag a zoom window in there or i can use my uh, program feed <clears throat> so the next thing you can do is is add slides so you can create simple slides by clicking the little area to the right of any card so i'll just show you that um if i just add a card so you see when you hover over here it sort of expands to show that you can add a card and when you click you can say um, you can add a title by, you know, ad ad entering something in there. Um, you can choose light or dark text, depending on what you want there. And um, you can also, like, if you don't, if you don't want to leave the keyboard, um, you can um, let's say um, I started, um, you know, let's sorry, <laughs> let's get started. If you wanted to promote that to a title, there is a keyboard shortcut, Command Shift T that turns that into the slides title. Um, and so that's um, that's sort of your basic slide. You can just put some text down the bottom or somewhere on the screen. And you can also have bullet points. So you can have like, let's, uh, sorry, let's come out of, uh, so you can have bullet one, bullet two, and those will just animate in. And the, the, the um, uh, you can do that with the uh, little pop-up here. Uh, you can add bullet points like this, add bullet point bullet three um, and or you can you can actually just type them in so if you just go star bullet bullet three that will have the same effect so um, that's a uh, so, so, sort of markdown style format and I and I plan on um, adding more little markdown features as time goes on so um, you will see the slide preview appear down here on the right so we've got the little slide previews and um, down there on the right or if you click the play button on the card um, then you're going to see that in your you know in your preview window and you can sort of like you know edit that and see what that's going to look like in real time so that's how I usually like to edit them um, you can add an image to any card and the layout will determine how the image is treated as well as well as the other stuff so and you can also add a background image and just make sure that's got a 16 to 9 aspect ratio and um, so i'll take you through some of the layouts so we've got 
like the lower third style thing. This is with bullets, so they come in one at a time. And it sort of treats this um, this bit here as like a icon, usually. It's sort of like you might put an avatar or an icon or something. And that's the same. There's also an upper third option for that. So you just um, to change the... Um, change the layout i feel like i'm not giving you the energy i could be giving you so to change that layout is it's here so you can have it at the top the bottom or, or any of these other ones that i'll show you now um so you can have like a sort of news reader type thing on the left or right and um, what's cool with this is if you are using shoot as your main camera um if you turn on face follow then it actually will make sure that your face is here it will sort of like pan across if there's something on this side or if there's something on this side it will pan to the other side so um that was something that was that was it's quite cool if you're just using your phone you can also have um content in the middle uh, and then those bullets will appear underneath or you can have like a big background image and you can also have like bullets on top of that so you can have like you can have an image um using the slide layout on top of a background image and i think that's useful for loads of stuff and of course if that background image has transparent areas then they will just show through to your to your camera i think um and then other types of content can be shared from cards using the options in the card pop-up so i'm talking about so we click on here and we've got like video screen camera music triggers so you can sort of attach one or a couple of things to each card and 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 that will take you through so i'll show you what a video looks like um so we can play back a video and that's going to be full screen um, you can just drag that onto the card it will be converted to it will be converted to hevc format so it'll be and an to sort of 10 1080p which is sort of like the maximum that's going to come through to a webcam and um, so even if you have a big video it's going to get ni nicely made nice and small and um, you'll see a little kind of progress thing on there you can um <clears throat> you can mute the video you can choose to loop it and that's what i do with my titles for this i just have like a little motion graphic for the for the stream and then just loop that and have that on a card and then that's sort of like that's sort of um winding away <laughs> while we're waiting to start the stream um if you want the audio to come through from this just make sure you're using the virtual mic because all of the audio all of the clever audio stuff is going to get piped through that virtual mic so even though you can sort of on a basic level you can probably get away with just it's quite useful to have the metering even if you're not using the audio the virtual mic like just being able to see if you're too loud but as soon as you want the sound to come through from other things then just make sure you've got the qcam audio selected in zoom um or you can or wherever you're sending it um next we've got you can select a screen to share so so there's some subtlety to this if you share a desktop it's going to be the whole display and that you can zoom in and out on that well i'll get to that in a moment but um <clears throat> you can choose a single application and the advantage of choosing a single app is you also get the audio from that app um, and so that's that's when you do that and also if you select a window and save your presentation and then open it up later if the window isn't open that it needs it will give you a like a message along the top saying hey you, you need to make sure this window's open otherwise i can't share it so that's um i find that really useful for just making sure i'm ready before i start um a stream um you can automatically open a website with a url trigger which i just did so i shared my screen and then i sort of jumped to <laughs> jump to show a website this works really well with arc browser which i've switched to recently because it gives you this sort of um this special kind of like standalone window if it sort of launches a window from somewhere so i find this really useful for just um knowing that there's not going to be loads of other stuff uh, when it's shared and and but you see here it's just you you can just type if you're sharing your screen you can just it just gives you this to 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 add to share a link and you can remove it with that or like add it there put a link in so if you just, just want to show a specific website on your desktop really easy to do that um uh finding my window you can also like if you are sharing your screen you can zoom in with your trackpad but you can also do it on your ipad so i can zoom in from my ipad i can sort of say okay let's zoom in on this thing and draw on it we'll talk about it zoom out so it's a really quick and easy way and um, just on the ipad i'm just sort of zooming in zooming out and that's actually like that's zooming sort of natively zooming the desktop feed on the mac so it's gonna like the closer you go it's not like 
going to be a blurry zoomed in thing it's going to give you the maximum resolution when it zooms in so that's why it's sort of for the desktop because it lets you sort of crop in and crop in so you you get good resolution without it it isn't like um it doesn't like expand the small image it like collapses the area that it's capturing and then scales that up um and then using a side 3d just you know you can always like come in and out and i would just get into the habit of doing this if you do sort of go off on a bit of a tangent then it's really good to just be able to do that and you can either press a to toggle that on your keyboard when q comes in the foreground or i have it set on a stream deck button um when you uh select a window to share you can be sure that your audience will only ever see the contents of that particular window which and so that's really useful um so it just means they're not going to see anything you don't want them to see um and again brings in the audio so it's just a great way to show a youtube video for example so if you've got your youtube window you can set that up as a window share and then just like make it the right dimensions and then it's, re it's really cool to to be able to sort of uh, control the volume of that either from the youtube window or, or within qcam um so that's I, I don't think there's an easier way to share a youtube video sp particularly on a zoom call like in the past you'd, you'd need like audio hijack or something and you'd have to sort of set up this elaborate thing that's what i was having to do anyway but now you can just um share the window find the video you can even use a url trigger to open the right one and then just like you can you can take people through that video on a website um <clears throat> You can also share a second camera, so that's this tab here. And here I've selected shoot on my phone and I actually get all the controls for that. And you see down here is that face follow option that sort of keeps you centered, but it doesn't make so much sense for the second camera, but maybe it might do. Um, you can, it's, it's cool if you have an overhead camera and you wanna to switch to the overhead and you wanna have that that sort of like focus locked and sort of like with the exposure how you want it. Um, and then when you sort of jump onto that, like that's that's all going to be good and you're going to be picture in picture or not like you, you have that option down here um whether or not you're going to stay picture in picture um music is the next tab here <laughs> so it's kind of a last minute addition but just really if you want some production values um the way it works is you start the music playing from a card and then you can like pause resume fade it out from from any other card so you sort of step through so the way i think you should be able to are we hearing something now um i guess hmm, maybe i'm not uh, we should be hearing something um maybe maybe it's not in there but um that's uh that's sort of in there and then we go to the next tab well let's let's just talk about this for a moment sorry um audio monitoring is is a whole thing and i would really say just please use headphones if you're using this um because it's like you don't really want the music spilling over you don't want the stuff feeding it'll feed back into the microphone even with the best will in the world just just get some little headphones <laughs> and then just you can sort of check the uh, monitoring in that audio bar just to check that the, mu the music will by default be monitored but your headphone monitoring might be switched off so that's that's up here so that's like this is where your headphones this is where your output is and then these are all the things that are kind of currently making sound and sending that through to the virtual mic and then you can see like what the output level of that is um but yeah headphones so that you can monitor when the music's playing and like you know it's not gonna you're not gonna feed back and then you can like add a stop music action when you want the music to stop uh, and you can set a fade time on that as well so if you want it to take fade out over three seconds you can and then um triggers are very powerful and this is sort of some of the beat sheet legacy this is uh the, any ecam scenes will show up in this drop down here any obs scenes will show up in that if there's a e memo live document open it will bring in all the documents and you can select the scenes uh well the layer sets in um, memo live so it will bring in stuff from other apps it knows about these other apps and it can like help you so if you did want to on a card switch to a different um layout in ecamm then you can do that just from your from your script and that's sort of like the power of beat sheet uh, but this is like you probably your main show you'll probably do it on the qcam virtual camera but then maybe your credits or you know you might do something at the end or if you're doing an interview you might switch to an interview mode layout um which you know in ecamm live or something like that uh, you've also got url triggers so it doesn't have to be a website like it can be like any app that can be opened with a link a, a deep link it, you can jump to the place in the app that you want and, and i use that all the time and actually like the stuff in the sidebar 
um you know if in doubt like this sidebar here if you do want to like use some feature so if i if you do want to set the main camera to like the facetime camera no one should ever do this you can <laughs> you can copy the deep link and this is just qcam colon like camera facetime camera you can use that as a link on a card and it will just like select it when you click on the link so so actually like any of these things has deep links so you can actually like have the cards through this url trigger thing like do all sorts you've also got keystrokes for triggers so when you add a keystroke you can select what app that that keystroke gets sent to and then osc is like really advanced stuff like for you know music and sort of like um video production that's you know a standard that, that can be used to send any sort of data across a network so you control your lights or something with it um so that's powerful and we'll probably get into more ideas about how to use that in future but yeah so we'll i'll finish this little script with some best practices again like this is going to be available to download um so just please keep it simple um just use your speaker notes to craft your presentation and let people focus on you like don't overuse qcam's features like you should sprinkle these things in have a bullet point here and there have a title here and there have an image here and there but you don't, you don't want to be like hiding behind all these sort of features the whole point is that it's you talking but when you when it would help to be able to like draw a quick diagram or like point at something with a laser pointer or add some magical sparkles like you can um you can do that but like that's not how you build your presentation you build your presentation by writing or just planning out your key points that you want to get across refining your language a little bit if you want to sort of if you so to sort of help you avoid having to like think on on your feet like how you're going to phrase something um, but just think about it as a teleprompter tool first and foremost and then all the other stuff is you sprinkle it in as needed right um get used to using a side 3d um if you start expanding on a point while you're sharing your screen you can just like quickly hit a side 3d so that you're sort of front and center and then when you're kind of ready to get back on track back on with the script then just you know sort of bring it back up again get a good microphone you're not going to look professional with bad audio right and and like laptops have horrible or microphones iphone yeah like i just i you know i'm using this thing <laughs> but really if you want to if you want your sort of content or presentations to really look good there's there's a limit to how much the video quality can make it look better at a certain point if you've got echoey horrible audio and you sort of sound like you're in the distance and everything's a bit weird it just sort of like undermines the whole thing so try and get a good microphone if you can um i i have like even like a lav mic like i really like the wireless go things but i guess they're a bit expensive but like anything that's just not your build macbook's built-in microphone is going to improve things and then like you see how i have i have that just try and keep your background quite plain because uh, it just gives you a lot more scope to put things on top of it um or sketch or draw something you know like uh sorry <laughs> you know this this sort of gives me space to sort of draw, draw a diagram and sort of like make a point um whereas if i had like my bookcase and my toy collection or whatever it is like my musical instruments collection behind me it's really hard to see the drawings and then i'm, I'm literally in a in a rented flat and i've just got a couple of these um sort of like colored you can't really see that it's colored because it's so bright um colored uh lights just to sort of bring a bit of bring a bit of color to the background if they're turned off it well, i can do it there's a remote control like i'll show you what this looks like without the without the background um so we can just turn those off and, and it's sort of just i don't know it's not the same is it i do have also like i do have a big um key light as well but this is like the lighting stuff it, it can get a bit bigger but like if you, if you want your image to look a bit better that's you, you don't need a lot but i have managed to set it up in this little room so it's not too hard but anyway so i would just say good luck um i just think once you start presenting with qcam on webcams or creating content with it, you're just not going to look back because you're not going to have all those issues um, that come from screen sharing on Zoom, all the limitations where you can't do anything, and you're not going to have all that horrible complexity of configuring OBS um, to sort of work the way you want, which is like, 
it, it, you really have to know your way around these the streaming software to sort of get it set up right and then you sort of never want to touch it again because like uh, it sort of works and then you're never quite sure qcam i've just taken all the best practices that i've learned over the last you know few years of live streaming and doing this kind of thing and like also being involved in off you just watching office hours questions and sort of feeling like learning things like growing my own confidence around this stuff taking the best practices that i see them using that with the sort of tv production backgrounds um and just sort of distilling it into a tool that you just like you know you write your little script um you sort of tag it with a few images here and there you've got your sort of nice uh, little live driving seat here uh, so you can sort of do things on the fly you can draw um you can use your phone as a webcam you know it's just all all there and you don't have to like worry about it and that will just only get better over time as well i'll refine it and just make sure that works really really well over time so this is that this is the deck so what the deck I've just taken you through, I am going to make it available. But let, let's just switch back to the main presentation. Um, so yeah, to download this deck, it's going to be at squares.tv slash qcam dash tour. Um, it's not there right now if you're watching live because I literally just finished it just before I started the stream. Um, but you'll be able to download that, especially if you're watching the playback, give it like a few minutes um, or check on Discord as well. Um, so you can grab that and, and sort of see see what's in there. Um, but yeah, like just, just to reiterate <laughs> about why QCAM Presenter is good. Like I was on a group Zoom call last night. It was this sort of mentorship training thing for Creative Edinburgh. And it was, it was just... It's just like really bad experience in Zoom when someone's doing a screen share. Like the speaker, like you've got sort of, you've got, um, as soon as they share their screen, suddenly like their screen share is here and they're like here. And like you're sort of, if someone else talks, you're sort of like, oh, is there, is there, who's got the green, like what microscopic thumbnail has a green box around it? Like I'm trying to sort of see their face and I don't really feel like I'm I'm getting to know anyone. And they might have like, um like a bullet point and they might talk for like five minutes with that bullet point and you can't see them all you can see is this sort of like plain slide that isn't fully revealed yet and i just wish they could have just like had you know qcam bullets up um instead um so you know like i i i sort of don't feel if someone asks a, a question you just can't see them um the speaker you can't see like this we're not like presentations like that they are for a room where you can see the person talking to you in 3d and then there is some supporting notes on the screen you're not supposed if you can only see the screen and you can barely see them it's just it just doesn't work and and this is kind of the world we're in and this is what i'm trying to change with qcam presenter and like if you're one of the first people to do this i think people are going to start going oh people are going to notice and especially if you use your little sparkle pen as well you can, you can sort of stand out as well um so uh yeah don't forget it's still 25 percent off until the end of november so as well as you'll get if you have bought shoot if you have bought video pencil if you have bought beat sheet those will be subtracted so you just click through to show my price and it will it'll do all that um if it doesn't show your purchases make sure you've downloaded qcam which you just download um and then just run just sort of launch shoot nearby, launch video pencil nearby. It will kind of connect to those and then it will let the server know that you bought them and then you'll have to sign in um, on, on, on your desktop and then you'll see that come through in the discounts. Uh, but yeah, it's 25% off to the end of November. Um, and just this this sparkle pencil is only going to be for the the winter season, by the way, but I, I flipping love it. Oh, just a, a minor note on that. Um, just if you, if you want to get the sparkle sounds when you're plugged in with your iPad, when you do get this, um, there is a, you have to, because I, I am going to make it come through to QCAM, but for now, you have to go to audio MIDI setup and the iPad will be down here and you have to click, you'll have to click enable on the iPad. Um, and then once it's enabled on the iPad, you'll be able to add that as like an audio input in QCAM. Um, it will show up there um, and then just make that quite quiet <laughs> um, and so that will look good right 
Um, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I haven't really seen any questions. I, I don't know how many people are here. But um, thank you everyone for joining me. I hope this is a useful resource as well. I know attention is in short supply, so I really appreciate you coming and I will see you next time. I'll see you on the Discord as well. Thank you.